Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, well, let's solve some problems. That's the purpose, actually, of the whole course. So you will um, train your mind to solve the problems. So um, I, I do recommend you, if you didn't attempt to do these problems just by yourself, pause the video and try it right now. It's very useful to, uh, to do things just on your own. I'm just helping you in case you cannot come up with a solution. Um, and um, I do recommend after this lecture is completed, um, try again just by yourself. Repeat uh, the, the proofs of whatever the formulas, derivations are, are presented in this lecture. Okay, so we are talking about problems on sum of angles. And the first one is... Uh, I would like to derive the formula for tangent of uh, sum of two angles. Now, I assume that the previous lectures related to sine and cosine of the sum of two angles are clear, and I will use, obviously, the result of this. And the obvious beginning is the definition of the tan tangent as uh, cosine uh, as a sine over cosine. That's one thing which we have to uh, obviously use. Now, I do know the formula for sine of two, uh, uh, sine of two angles and the cosine of two angles. So let's just use it. Sine alpha, cosine beta sine beta cosine alpha divided by cosine alpha cosine beta minus sine alpha sine beta, right? Okay, so um, what we have to do here to transform it into tangent uh, of the angles, let's divide the numerator and denominator by cosine alpha, cosine beta. What happens is equals. If I define uh, divide sine alpha, cosine beta, divide by cos cosine alpha, cosine beta, cosines will will be reduced, and the sine over cosine will be left, which is by definition, tangent of alpha. If I divide, divide this by, by this, my cosine alpha would be reduced, and I will have sine beta over cosine beta, so, which is, by definition, tangent of beta. Now, in the denominator, I divide by the same um, uh, product of cosines, so I will have 1 here, minus sine over cosine and sine over cosine. So that's the product of tangents. And that's the formula. This is the formula which expresses tangent of sum of two angles as tangents of the components of the sum. And the derivation is very simple. I just use the definition of the tangent. Then expressions for uh, sine and cosine of uh, sum of two angles. And the only well, little trick, if you wish, which I had to do is divide the numerator and denominator by the same cosine times cosine, cosine alpha times cosine beta. Now, obviously, this formula is true wherever alpha, beta, and alpha plus beta are defined. And you know that with the tangent, it's not always. Now, the tangent is not defined wherever cosine is um, equal to zero, which is pi over 2 plus pi n, right? Where n any natural, uh, any integer number. So, if angle 
alpha is like this, not equal to this, and beta not equal to this, and alpha plus beta not equal to this, then the formula makes sense. Then the formula has every member defined. That's very important to remember that the formulas for sine and cosine, they are, well, absolute in some, in some sense. They are uh, true for, for any two angles. The formulas for other functions, like tangent, for instance, might not be um, uh, true for, for all the angles, because at some angles, tangent or other functions might not be defined at all. OK, let's move on. Let's analyze this formula a little bit. Let me just repeat it here. So, what's interesting is um, there is an additional restriction here in this formula. You see, not only we dependent on alpha and beta and alpha plus beta so that their tangents correspondingly are defined, we also dependent on the, new, uh, on the denominator of this particular um, uh, fraction not to be equal to zero, which means tangent alpha times tangent beta should not be equal to one, right? Because if it's equal to one, the formula has additional restriction on alpha or beta or alpha plus beta, whatever it is. Now, let's think about this particular thing. And I would like to derive some additional condition on alpha and beta, so the denominator not equal to zero, because again, that's the another restriction on uh, on, the, on the on the validity of the formula. So when is this equal to one? So let's go by definition: sine alpha over cosine alpha times uh, sine beta over cosine beta is equal to 1, right? That's what it means. Now, um, we are obviously uh, working in this area where tangents are defined. And alpha plus beta not equal to pi over 2 plus the n. So these are, as I mentioned before, necessary for all our tangents to be um, defined. So we are assuming that these inequalities are held. Now we are adding this one. Now, obviously, cosine of alpha and cosine of beta are not equal to 0 right now because of these restrictions, right? So I can multiply this um, equation by cosine alpha, cosine beta. And what I will have is sine alpha sine beta equals cosine alpha cosine beta, right? Or if I um, subtract, uh, subtract sine alpha sine beta from both sides, I will have cosine alpha cosine beta minus sine alpha sine beta equals to zero. Now, do you recognize this formula? Well, this is the cosine of alpha plus beta. So, my restriction on the denominator here, which is translated into this, which is translated into this and this, actually means that the cosine of alpha plus beta should not be equal to zero, which is already something which we have covered. So whenever our tangents, all tangents are defined, in exactly the same area, we can say that this is not e e e equal to one. Because if it's equal to one, it's exactly the same as this, and this is already taken care of. So the denominator equal to zero does not present any additional restrictions on the, on the angles. So the angles are still restricted by these three inequalities. So none of them should be equal to pi over 2 plus 
pi n. Okay, that completes the analysis of this formula for the tangents of sum of true angles. Let's move on. Okay, next couple of problems are related to one interesting uh, task. Um, let's assume you have some kind of equation where you have sine and cosine and, and, and tangent and whatever other different trigonometric functions participate. What's the difference between this equation and, let's say, this one? Sine squared x plus 2 sine x minus 3 equals to 0. Now, this is a trigonometric equation, but you can always say, let's assume that we assign y as a sine of x, a new variable, and substitute it. Well, we will have a quadratic equation for y, right? Which we can solve. And since we know the value of y, using arc sine function, we can always find the x. Now, what if I have a mixture? Let's say this is a cosine. Well, now it's not as simple. I mean, you can't really have one particular um, uh, variable to replace the sine or cosine or whatever to get to an algebraic equation of polynomial, right? So you cannot easily transfer this into polynomial equation or something which is, resembles the polynomial equation at least. So the next few problems are related to how to resolve this. Now, if I will be able to express sine and cosine and any other function of some variable x using one and the same expression, then using that expression and substituting, substituting this expression as a new variable, I can reduce it to algebraic equation or polynomial or something like this. So, and here is the rule. Actually, sine x and cosine x and tangent x and cotangent x and, and, and second and cosecond uh, of, uh, of, of x all can be expressed in terms of tangent of a half angle. So what I will do is I will derive a few form formulas how to um, express, for instance, sine of um, uh, some angle through tangent of half of this angle. And again, the problem is not to complicate the issue. The problem is to express all different trigonometric functions through the same. So sine through the tangent of half ang angle, cosine through the tangent of half, half angle, etc. If I will be do, if I will be able to do this, then the equation like I have just written can be rewritten first by replacing sine and cosine with the tangent of half an angle, and then using tangent of half an angle as a new variable. Because that reduces the multiplicity of the trigonometric function to a single trigonometric function. Sine and cosine and tangent and all others are all replaced with the tangent of half angle. All right, so my first formula is how can I express sine of the angle as um, in terms of tangent of half an angle? Well, here it is. No doubts about that, right? I split the phi into phi over 2 plus phi over 2, and now I will use the formula for sine of sum of two angles, right? Um, which is sine of phi over 2 cosine of phi over 2 plus sine of phi over 2 times cosine of phi over 2 equals to 2 sine equals to 2 sine phi over 2 cos sine phi over 2. Okay. We know this. 
Now, why is this better than this? Well, here is why. Let's multiply and uh, divide by cosine of phi squared. What happens? Well, if I divide One cosine will be reduced, so I will have only one cosine on the, uh, in the denominator and sine in the numerator, so I will have two sine over cosine, which is tangent phi over two, times cosine square of phi over two equals. Now, if you remember, in some elementary trigonometric identities, we used to have a formula, 1 plus uh, tangent square of phi equals to 1 plus sine square over cosine square equals, now if you um, have it as one uh, denominator, in the numerator, you will have cosine squared plus sine squared, which is 1. So, from here, you deduce that the cosine squared is equal to 1 over 1 plus tan tangent squared. So, this is equal to 2 tangent uh, phi over 2 divided by 1 plus tangent squared phi over 2. Okay. So that's the that's the expression. Now we have expressed sine as a function of tangent of the half angle. Now, again, just by itself it would be worthless. We don't really need it. This is much simpler than this. But now the next problem is how to express cosine of phi in terms of tangent again. So this is cosine of phi over 2 plus phi over 2, which is cosine uh, square phi over 2 minus sine square phi over 2, right? It's cosine, cosine by cosine minus sine by sine. And what I will do, I'll do exactly the same. I divide by cosine square, like here, and multiply by cosine square. Now, if I divide by cosine square, I will have 1 minus tangent square. If I multiply by cosine square, that's the same thing as divided by 1 over uh, 1 plus tangent square. Same thing as before. So I was using the formula uh, formula cosine square equals to The check of just the right. All right, so now we have both sine expressed as a tangent of the half angle and cosine expressed as the function of the tangent of half an angle. Now, what's the advantage of this? I mean, this advantage is obvious. This is much more complex, right? But the advantage is that both sine and cosine are expressed in terms of tangent of the same angle. Right? So if I would like to convert uh, a trigonometric expression which involves both sine and cosine, for instance, sine x plus cosine x equals to 1. How to resolve this particular 
uh, equation? Well, it's not obvious, at least not immediately obvious, but if you use these formulas which transfer both sine and cosine into the tangent of the half an angle, then you will have two tangent uh, x over 2 over 1 plus tangent square x over 2 plus 1 minus uh, tangent square of x over 2 1 plus tangent square x over 2 equals to 1. Now you multiply both sides by 1 plus tangent of x over 2 and you have minus tangent square x over 2 plus 2 tangent x over 2 plus 1. I have changed the order so I will have second degree, first degree, and zeroth degree of the tangent equals to 1 plus tangent square x over 2. Now, this can be reduced, this, uh, and then we will add this and, and, and divide, and add this and subtract this to this side, and we will have 2 tangent square x over 2 minus 2 tangent x over 2 equals to 1. We can, uh, sorry, equals to 0. We can reduce it by 2. And basically now it's very easy to resolve it because, well, in this particular case, it's tangent of x over 2 times 1 minus tangent of x over 2 equals to 0. So either this is equal to 0, and that's when sine is equal to um, sine of x over 2 is equal to 0, right? Tangent is equal to 0 when the sine is equal to 0. So the angle is pi n. This is for x over 2. And for this case, x over 2 equals to, when the tangent is equal to 1, that's uh, 45 degrees, right? This is 45 degrees, um, and the period is pi n. So it's pi over 4 plus pi n. Now, considering this is x over 2, the solution for x would be uh, 2 pi n and pi over 2 plus 2 pi n. So, on the unit circle, it's this angle and this angle, right? This is 0 plus pi n, 2 pi n, and this is pi over 2 plus uh, pi n. In this case, sine is equal to um, 0 and cosine is equal to 1, and the sum is equal to 1. In this case, sine is equal to 1 and cosine is equal to 0, and the sum is again 1. So, you see, that's how we have resolved these particular things. That's how you can solve an equation which contains both uh, sine and cosine or some other trigonometric functions because all these trigonometric functions can be expressed in terms of one tangent of the half an angle. Now, um, as a continuation of this problem, let's express, uh, so we've done sine and cosine in terms of tangent of the half angle. Let's do tangent. What if this equation contains not only sine and cosine, but also tangent? We have to be able to um, express any uh, trigonometric function in terms of tangent of the half an angle, right? So this is, by definition, this. In terms of tangent of the half angle, this would be 2 tangent pi over 2 divided by 1 over tangent square 
phi over 2, that's the sine. A cosine would be 1 minus tangent square phi over 2 divided by, so it will go to the top Now, this is reduced, so we will have 2 tangent phi over 2 divided by 1 minus tangent phi square. So that's the, that's the answer for tangent. Now, for cotangent, obviously this is reverse, so this is reverse, right? Because cotangent is 1 over tangent. Now, for uh, secant, that's 1 over cosine, right? So you use the formula for a cosine, uh, which is 1 minus tangent squared divided by 1 plus tangent squared, and you just invert it. So it will be 1 plus tangent divided by 1 minus tangent. And cosecant is 1 over sine correspondingly. You know what I mean. Okay, fine. So that's all for these formulas. Um, what, uh, what I would like actually to point out that you don't have to remember all these formulas. These formulas are not for, I mean, the whole purpose of this lecture was not actually to convey you the formula which you have to remember but to talk about how to derive these formulas and to uh, encourage you to try to do it yourself. So again, let me repeat my um, recommendation. After this lecture is completed, try to do exactly the same just by yourself. Derive these formulas yourself. Now, um, the last problem which I have is what is a sign of 15 degrees. Now, there are a few problems, and the next one will be much more interesting. It will be 18, 18 degrees. Now, 15 degrees is really very easy. Why? Because it's half of the 30. And 30 is a nice basic ang angle. We know sine and cosine and all this. So, if we know this sine and cosine for 30 degrees, how can we derive the value for 15? degrees. Well, think about this this way. Um, remember cosine uh, of 15 plus 15 degrees, which is cosine of 30, which we know, actually. Well, this is what? Um, cosine squared 15 minus sine squared of 15 degrees, right? This is the cosine of the sum of two angles. In this case, angles are the same. Or, if you wish, you can replace cosine with cosine square as 1 minus sine square. So it would be 1 minus 2 sine square 15 degrees. So here is your equation. 2 sine square 15 degrees equals to 1 minus One minus square root of three over two, or two minus square root of three over two. So sine fifteen is equal to two minus square root of three by four. So that's how easy we can derive something like sine of fifteen degrees. Well, that's it. That completes this particular lecture. Um, I think trigonometry presents a lot of different um, challenges and, and, and interesting problems, actually, which uh, I will try to convey as much as possible in terms of equations, identities, conditional equations, conditional identities, etc. Um, so there will be many problems, and um, I think that's exactly why we have this course. So thanks very much, and good luck.